Since the end of July, Checkpoint has looked in depth at the financial pressures on many of the country's DHBs, Southern, Canterbury, Northland, Waikato, Counties Monaco and more. Throughout that time, we've used our own sources, internal documents leaked to us, staff members at the DHB, even ministry sources in Wellington. But tonight we talk to the head of the Association of Salaried Medical Specialists, Ian Powell. And as you'll hear, he tells us that in all his time at the ASMS, he's never seen people on the ground in health, including the doctors he represents, under such pressure due to their workloads, whilst DHB bosses are under pressure to cut deficits by finding more efficiencies. We'll have more on that soon. But first, last month, Checkpoint obtained a survey by the New Zealand Nurses Organisation, which showed... 267 of 272 surveyed nurses at the county's Monaco DHB answered yes to a question about whether they've experienced short staffing. Well, today Ian Powell told us the ASMS had surveyed clinical leaders, and what did they find? Well, what it tells us is that they are overstretched, under-resourced, uh, burnt out. We know from earlier research we've done from in August last year that 50% of specialists in our public hospitals are burnt out. And, and it, it varies a bit from district health board to district health board, but not markedly. So there's a very high burnout rate at counties. And this shows the obvious that that burnout is primarily due to being overworked. Now, your program has featured quite a lot on deficits of district health boards. There's a lot that can be said on that. But the point I would make in the context of uh, this matter is that specialists are paying for that deficit with their health, with their personal health. And there is an abrogation of responsibility both politically from government and generally from district health boards as a whole to that fact. There's an ab ab abrogation of responsibility. Ian, I want to come back to that, what you're calling uh, an abrogation of responsibility. But first... You're telling us doctors are really up against it. Previously on Checkpoint, we've had a survey from nurses saying almost exactly the same thing, that they are really up against it, that they are stretched. But Checkpoint, and I'm holding it now, has also obtained a document, we reported on it last month, which is a voluntary cessation scheme, an offer of redundancy to staff, including clinicians. Now, their CEO, Dr Gloria Johnson, says it's not uh, voluntary redundancy, but it certainly offers people a way out. They can be paid to leave. At the same time as people working there are saying, hey, we're really up against it, we need more staff. Is that a paradox? Well, it's worse than that. It's sheer bonkers. Look, um, I don't know where to start with that. It, it is it is absolutely absurd, and it shows how much that leadership and that dear, under its current leadership regime is operating in a bubble, and they're not operating in the real clinical frontline world. Uh, it, it it is absurd. Uh, whether it's a redundancy or not, they are using the standard redundancy formula to calculate what the uh, payment might be. And what that is doing is saying to the existing workforce, OK, you're working very hard, you're working long hours, we get, we, our contribution is going to be to make it worse for you. But further, to do that at a time when that DHB needs to be recruiting more staff, uh, even just to fill ex official vacancies, what sort of message is that giving to applicants who might want to consider working in, in, the, in the South Auckland area? Uh, a very negative message. So that, that's a consequence of poor leadership, pure and simple. Is that a consequence of poor leadership, pure and simple, or of real financial pressures? The DHBs that we have spoken to, and in this case, Counties Monaco, their CEO, Dr Gloria Johnson, told us they probably wouldn't be doing stuff like this if they didn't have to reduce their deficit. Clearly, district health boards are underfunded. Uh, the best estimates we're aware of, and in a conservative estimate, is that since 2010, about $1.5 billion in, in relative terms has been sucked out of the system. Can you explain uh, that to that me? Period of so what does that mean? Uh, t taking into account demographic growth and taking into account cost increases, using the index that the Ministry of Health has to measure these things. So in, not in real terms, because health funding always goes up, but relative to cost pressures, which is influenced in part by demographic growth, uh, the funding has gone down. Or rather, the funding, is, yeah, the funding has gone down by an estimated $1.5 billion uh, uh, over, over the period of time since 2010. So the kind of pressures that 
we have seen and you have been talking about as existing at Counties Monaco, are they in other DHBs? Well, we know they are. We've seen them in Southern, we've seen them in Canterbury, we've reported on them in Northland. Uh, we've heard from lots of DHBs saying to varying degrees they feel under pressure. Is that what you're hearing from your members? We are very much. Just on the specific issue of the survey, we've conducted similar surveys in Hawke's Bay, Mid-Central, Capital Coast and Nelson Marlborough over a similar period of time. And the, and, the, and the results are very, very similar. Variations are around the margins. But overwhelmingly we are finding that it is a really very difficult to provide quality health care at the moment. People are feeling under immense strain. But there's a two problems fold problem here, John. One is that we, we, we do have underfunding. There's no doubt about that. The second thing, though, is that we have a significant failure of leadership. We have an abrogation of responsibility for the minister, from the Minister of Health, I might suggest might be renamed the, the Minister of Soundbites, and the... Um, and, and, and amongst some district health boards themselves. So some make erratic decisions and they panic. And the county situation with the voluntary cessation is an example of that. Ian, my, my sense is that they feel stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Deficits aren't welcome. The DHBs we've spoken to describe real pressure around their financial targets. So they're looking for efficiencies, but their staff are saying, hey, we can't be any more efficient than we already are. And that is a real tension. And DHB after DHB, we've been reporting on this stuff for two months now. And I know you've been doing this for a lot, lot longer. Have you ever seen that kind of tension between shop floor and fiscal pressure as pronounced as it is now? No, I've actually been thinking about that question for some time because it's very easy to sort of feel like the, recent, the most recent pressure is the worst ever. Uh, but when I think back to, for example, that we had a very bizarre market business model experience in our health system in the 1990s, but even then, when there was some initial financial retrenchment, the government of the day did turn that round a bit with, yeah. by addressing funding, uh, not, not, not in the best way, but in a better way. In this case, what I would say now is that you've got to take it as something that's really accumulated over a period of time, but particularly since 2010, and I think it is worse now, the way it's accumulated and the failure to address the warning signs ever that I've experienced. Ian Powell of the Association of Salaried Medical Specialists.